Hi, welcome to the Mentor Engineer. In this video, we're going to learn how to use a decision matrix to make decisions easier. Okay, so making decisions as an engineer is very difficult. And part of the problem is, is there's just so much information. And a lot of times we don't have all the information we need. So we need to make the best decision we can with the information we have. And that's not always easy, but using a decision matrix is going to help simplify that process. A decision matrix is a uh, matrix or a table. And what you do is you uh, select a bunch of criteria for your decision and you come up with a bunch of solutions. You're going to weigh each uh, criteria as far as how important it is to the overall success of your project. And then you're going to assign values to each of the solutions in those categories. And then you're just going to total it all up and it'll get you some information, some new information. And that information is very important because uh, it'll allow you to at least rule out you know, one, maybe two uh, solutions or maybe you know, 10 to 25 percent. Uh, and then it will also allow you to see which criteria uh, maybe are unspoken or you haven't selected yet. Maybe you, your first try at them wasn't weighed all that great. All right, so we are going to work an example because this is far easier to show uh, doing an example than just talking about it. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about cutting grass. So here we are at a decision matrix. All right, and I told you we we're gonna cut lawns and let's just assume that we have a business, we're starting up and we're gonna cut lawns. And the first thing we need is a device that cuts lawns. All right, so let's start looking at our criteria of what kind of device we're gonna buy. All right, and uh, there's very, uh, there's just certain things that we're, we're, we care about. So uh, our time to mow, it's important, you know, if I can cut six grass, uh, six yards per day instead of three, uh, well, that, that could double my profit. So um, that's uh, very important. My cost is important. Uh, you know, I don't want to be, you know, having a, a loan where uh, I bought this uh, lawnmower and it's going to take me 15 years to pay off at uh, doing, you know, one, one, mo uh, one yard per day. It's uh, going to take a long, long time. Uh, cut quality. All of my customers are going to care about, you know, how, how was it cut? Was it even? Um, did I, I do a good job? And that's going to be important. That's almost a, uh, what we'd call a must. Um, if it doesn't do it, I don't care. Uh, so, and then the last one is maintenance. And uh, uh, how much is that going to cost me per year? And how much time is it going to take? Now, lawn mowing is a very interesting uh, uh, business because well half the year my grass doesn't grow so I have essentially you know at least two three four five months that uh, machines is going to be sitting there and uh, I can't um, uh, do anything with it so I got time to mow it now if I were to buy you know like a zero turn lawnmower maybe there's another purpose maybe I can buy an attachment to it that would uh, allow me to uh, mulch leaves or something of that nature. If I uh, put a tractor down here, uh, maybe that would allow me to uh, do another business of, um, you know, hauling something in the winter and I could get uh, more use out of my thing. So maybe that's another criteria that we would add. But for right now, we're just cutting grass. All right. So over here, I've looked at uh, four different options. First one is a scythe, uh, you know, the little device that you'd swing and it's got a blade on it and you just cut the grass and just uh, lays there. Uh, push mower. Just push that thing whether it's self-propelled or not. I uh, did not specify. A uh, riding lawn mower. Uh, very good choice. And a zero turn uh, riding lawn mower. All right, so that's the four I put there. Like we said, we could have uh, some sort of tractor or something else of that and put a shredder behind it but I've just limited it to these four for this purpose. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign values to these uh, of 
uh, just a number, uh, a round number, and we want to stick to integers. Uh, so we're talking, we want to do a scale of 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4. Uh, and I always like to do 1 to an even number. So 1 to 4, 6, 8, 10. Uh, generally don't go higher than 10. It's just too many uh, divisions in between. All right, I choose 4 because it forces whoever fills this out to take a stance whether something is slightly positive or slightly negative. So, um, you know, if I did 1 to 4, 1 would be I, I, that's, that's like the worst, and then well, it's below average with being a 2, and then above average being a 3, and then great being 4. All right, but it forces somebody to take a side and not just feel neutral or wishy-washy about something. So I think 1 to 6 is probably the best range of numbers to use uh, because it doesn't give you so many choices, uh, but it does force you to, uh, you know, take a stand one way or the other. All right, so for this example, we're going to use a 1 to 6, and I'm just going to go through here. And I'm going to say my time to mow with a scythe, it's horrible. It's going to be a 1. All right. Oh, yeah. 1 being the worst, and 4, 5, 6, 10, whatever being the best uh, option. Whatever, whatever scale you use, the, the higher number is the, the better. Um, all right, I, my cost is going to be, uh, it's going to be pretty cheap. So, uh, dang, we'll make that a 6. My cut quality, obviously, going to be a 1. Uh, because that thing is not going to be even. Uh, I, I won't compare it to uh, trying to mow your lawn with a weed whacker. Uh, it's going to be uneven. It's not going to look good. It's going to take forever. Don't. This one, obviously, we could probably see as a non-starter, but we'll see where the points lie. Uh, my maintenance, cost and time. i got to sharpen a blade probably once a year. I'm probably not going to hit it on many rocks, so um, we'll give that a six. All right, so our next one is a push mower. Push mower is going to be faster, but not super fast. Gosh, it's still probably going to be a two out of a six. Our cost, I can see that being a four, just above average. Uh, cut quality, that's going to be pretty good. Push mower's got good cut quality. Uh, our maintenance, cost and time, uh, they don't take much to maintain them, so let's give it a five. Uh, riding lawn mower, uh, same thing. Gosh, a riding lawnmower versus a push mower, I could probably do uh, four to five times better. So I'm going to give that a five. I know there's things that are out there faster, like the zero turn. Uh, my cost. Cost is going to be going to be quite considerable. So I'm going to give that a two. Uh, cut quality, that's going to be good. And our maintenance, not bad. Um, Let's just say that's a three, because there's going to be more. We got to give it an oil change, a little bit more oil. Uh, we're going to have, um, you know, rust on the deck and stuff like that that we're going to have to to do uh, every year to uh, make sure that our equipment lasts long. Uh, sharpened blades, we're probably going to have to replace those, you know, three or four times a year. And there's usually three, four. Uh, there's probably just three blades on it. Okay, so zero tier lawnmower. Time to mow. It's going to be our fastest option. Uh, just because, you know, we can get into tighter spaces easier. Uh, we can turn right back around rather than having to make a, a, a bigger turn. So just that little bit of, of uh, optimization of our cutting process is going to help out, give us a little advantage over a standard riding lawnmower. The cost is going to be, let's just say it's going to be the worst one. It's going to be more expensive. We know it is. And our cut quality, once again, is going to be a six. Um, our maintenance, cost, and time, uh, it's probably going to be the same. So we'll give that a three, as uh, same as the riding lawnmower that is. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to weigh these, all right? We could probably say that our maintenance, time, and cost, probably the lowest number here. And we want to give these an integer uh, value as well. Now, they may or may not total to anything. Um, but we want to make sure that, uh, you know, if, if you do want to, you know, force yourself into some uh, interesting criteria, you know, try to make them equal, you know, 10 or 100, but it doesn't have to, all right? 
So let's look at each one. I'm going to go uh, time to mow. Time to mow is probably our most important thing here by far because if I can do you know even one more lawn per day, that's going to trump cost uh, every time. All right. The only thing it might compete with is cut quality because uh, cut quality and time to mow are probably on the, on par for the same. Because if I don't have uh, good good cut quality, it doesn't matter what my time to mow is. Okay. So I'm just going to say uh, I'm going to try to keep everything with a lower number. I'm going to say that's ten. All right. My cost, like I said, is probably not important. Uh, I'm going to make that a three. All right, because I can make up for the, the cost if I can mow more yards. Uh, my cut quality, that's very important. That could be even higher than 10 if, if I, I wanted it to be. And then my maintenance cost and time, gosh, that is pretty low. I mean, that's somewhat important, but I can't, I can't fathom giving it more than a one. Now here I've got a total of 24, and that number really doesn't mean anything. It's just a proportion of what it is, but... If I was trying to uh, make this all equal to 10, uh, then I'd have to go back and redistribute this and make some different decisions there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply this number times each one in the column. And we'll just go through here and do that. It's easy with 10. Now you can see here that uh, our most important criteria, this one is six times more than that one. so. Side is probably going to go bye bye. All right, we got 18, 12, 6, and 3. We've got 10, 60, 60, 60. We've got uh, 6, 5, 3, and 3. Okay, and we're almost done here. All we got to do now is add up these points on the call on the on the side of it. All right, so that's 20, 38, uh, 40, 44. Uh, we've got 80, 92, 97. So we can see this one's already about half of that one. Uh, we've got 110. Uh, 116, 119. Alright, we got 120, 126. Okay, so this is our, our scores. You can see here, uh, this one, probably just get rid of it. it, it we just don't need it. It's, it's such a bad thing. It's, it's a third of this score. Uh, and we can see here that uh, even the push mower, uh, maybe we don't have this quite right. Maybe our, our time to mow um, will be less here. I mean, push mowing, uh, maybe this, this criteria should be more. Uh, so really at this point, you know, these are seven points apart. I would say that this is probably the two options that we would have. And if we can, if we have enough customers right off the bat, I push towards the zero turn. Uh, if not, uh, maybe just go with a riding mower and then uh, you can maybe trade that in or sell it to somebody else, get some money out of that, and upgrade to the zero turn when you do have the business to support it. But I just wanted to show you how this is a great tool for whatever decision you're making, whether it's your uh, professional life or even in your personal life. If you want to figure out what vacation you should take, you know, put Hawaii in there and Fiji and whatever else, but uh, just use this process. It'll it'll help make everything easier. You can figure out what is important to you, you you personally, and you as a as a business uh, to to uh, you know make the best decision you can uh, based off of uh, you know how you feel about something. Uh, honestly, this has saved me so much time uh, in my career. So I just wanted to pass that on to you and uh, use this in your next design. Have a great day. Bye-bye.